Chapter 2 The Blessing <laughs> Laban sat, contemplating what he had in his hands. The young man Jacob had proven to be extraordinary. Long before his sister married Jacob's father, he had heard of the mysterious lock that seemed to work for the household of Abraham. They called it the blessing. Some mysterious fortune evoked by the unseen god Yahweh, which caused them to prosper even under the most unlikely circumstances. Laban and his sons watched closely to see what Jacob's methods were, but they never got the same results. Not one of the female sheep and goats under Jacob's care had miscarried their young. Incredibly, they seemed to be more fertile than ever, and the little lambs came out healthy and strong. But now there were rumors of Jacob's intention to leave Haran. Uncle, Jacob interrupted his thoughts. I have given some considerations to your generous offer. And you have concluded, Laban said eagerly. He had asked Jacob to choose his own wages in the hope that a generous proposition would keep him around. He had plans for the young man. I will work seven years for your daughter Rachel. Rachel. What was the lad up to? Yes, uncle. Rachel. Oh, don't be foolish, Jacob. Rachel is a child and knows nothing about marriage. Besides, you know our custom. You can't skip the older sister to wed the younger. Jacob's lip tipped into a smile. Rachel is hardly a child, uncle. My desire is for her. He leaned forward. I have considered the matter of Leah. I will wait and work seven years. Surely Leah will be married by then. Laban shifted about in his seat, twiddling his fingers. Oh, Leah, what was he to do for her? She was not that bad. She wasn't bad at all. She was simply no match for Rachel's beauty and vibrancy. And you would take nothing else. Nothing. Rachel is worth more to me than possessions. Oh, the gods. The lad was nuts. It's a shame. Laban said with a deliberate sigh. Leah will be far more suitable for you. She's homely and delicate. And will certainly make a more suitable wife. One look at Jacob's set jaw, and Laban knew there was no use pursuing that thought. Jacob was a mild man, yet something about him commanded respect. He was wise and held a confident, steady gaze. Laban had made attempts to fill his nephew's mind with Leah. He had her attend to all his meals and encouraged her to weave him a new cloak. He could have sworn there was a connection building between them. Jacob sat hands clasped on his knees, waiting for a more favorable response. Well, well, Laban rubbed his chin, smiling with consolation. At least, I won't be parted with any of my possessions, not yet. It was his concern for Leah that restrained him, but he would eventually have to give Rachel out anyway. Good thing he hadn't. This offer far outweighed all the rest. Besides, seven years was a long time. Surely Leah would be married before then, and the mystery following the young man would turn him into the wealthiest herdsman in the region. Very well, Jacob. I shall make all the arrangements. It was barely sunrise, and Jacob was standing on the plains some distance from the camp facing the woman of his dreams. Laban was present with his older son, Ibar, and an older relative to witness his betrothal to Rachel. Jacob let his mind wander back to when he arrived at Haran. After days of gruesome traveling, he had reached a large well in the eastern plains, surrounded by shepherds with their sheep. Soon after, Rachel had approached the well with her flock, she wielded her staff like it was used to rule an empire, rather than guide a flock of sheep. Her every move was pristine, the sheep following as her loyal subjects. 
He observed the questioning look in her beautiful, bold eyes as he proceeded to help open up the well. <clears throat> Laban cleared his throat, drawing back his attention. Rachel, do you accept to be married to this man? After such a time as he has fulfilled the betrothal agreement. Mm -hmm. Rachel blushed, but before she could respond, Laban's relatives spoke up. Uh, Laban, perhaps the young maiden should be made aware of this agreement, given its peculiarity. Of course. <clears throat> Laban cleared his throat again. Jacob has agreed to work seven years for your hand in marriage. Seven years? Her eyes widened. Rachel. Jacob moved closer to her. You know I have no possessions of my own. He tried to whisper to her hearing alone. Jacob doubted her consent was of any importance to Laban, but he would be satisfied with her willingness. She was young and naive, but was surely familiar with her father's greed. It hadn't taken Jacob very long to realize for himself the extent Laban would go to get whatever he wanted. He would receive no small prize for Rachel's hand. Jacob wasn't willing to take any chances. Rachel gave him an understanding smile, and he stepped back. Laban repeated his question. I accept. Rachel said, a rebellious tone in her voice. Laban poured from a wineskin and gave it to Jacob. He drank half of its content and gave Rachel to finish the rest. Turning to his son and relative, Laban declared, You have borne witness to the betrothal of these two. Jacob endured heavy congratulatory pats on his back before returning his attention to his bride. She was staring ahead at nothing in particular. Awesome. Oh, I was only wondering how Leah would react to this. Rachel said, trying to sound amused. Laban turned his attention to them. Better to keep this a secret from your sister. Oh, why bother, father? Rachel rolled her eyes. Leah has always supported your decisions. After a threatening glare from her father, she walked away with Ibar. Jacob stared after her. Her defiant words didn't hide the strain on her face. It was clear she was bothered. This dispute between you and your brother must be severe, Laban said. Jacob stiffened. How so? He said, dragging his gaze away from Rachel. Why couldn't the man mind his own business? You are willing to spend seven years away from my poor sister and all the luxury of Abraham she married into? I stay because of Rachel. Time is all I have to offer. Laban's curiosity wasn't so easily satisfied. What are you running from? He asked with a stern look. I insist on knowing Jacob for the safety of my household. Of course it was more for his itchy ears than the safety of anyone. He was getting used to Laban's sneaky tactics. I disguised myself as my brother Esau and took his birthright. Jacob looked him squarely in the eyes suppressing the shame and regret that constantly tugged his heart. Beth right. Laban sized him up. Well, you managed to escape with none of his possessions. It was not a matter of possessions. It was my father's dying blessing that I would preserve his lineage and ensure the coming of the promised offspring. Esau didn't deserve a blessing he constantly mocked and eventually despised. Still, this was the last thing Jacob wished to discuss with anyone at Haran. Laban stood still, staring at him. Jacob knew the ways of the Hebrews always astonished outsiders. Even closely related tribes like Laban's, who acknowledged Yahweh. He offered no further explanation. And you Hebrews call us fetish, Laban said before walking away. Though Laban's family was not ignorant of the unseen God, Statues of their ancestors, passed down through many generations, had become gods they related with more comfortably. He would have to instruct his household on the proper devotion to Yahweh.